Coming up in the Joy Business Reports, businesses hint of adopting strategies to avoid tax payments and shut down their operations over concerns of high levies. Also, managing director of International Monetary Fund advocates support for Ghana to come out of its debt and economic crisis. We have details from Cote d'Ivoire where she has been speaking ahead of the annual IMF World Bank meetings in Maka. Marrakesh, Morocco. Later on the Joy Business Journal, we'll bring you how high prices and interest rates are frustrating potential homeowners as the Joy FM Habitat Fair moves to Kumasi, the Garden City. Details with me, Hannah Odami. Now, some businesses and manufacturing firms have indicated they will be forced to adopt strategies to avoid paying taxes and shut down operation. It follows concerns of the current tax regime and Ghana Revenue Authority's recent approach in collecting levies. Mark Badu Abwaji is the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. He's been speaking to PM Express business edition. If you want me to pay tax and you are not putting things in place for me, my business to expand, to get the money to pay, then where am I going to get the money? Mm. To pay the taxes for you. So if there is a way for me to avoid, I will do that. If upon all these things, I cannot sustain myself as a business person, I will close down. And then otherwise, I will find other places that for me is very conducive. But, but some will say, let's be realistic here. And the argument is that you look at what is happening in the economy, the activities that are happening. Any government anywhere want to find a way to cream some of the profits. Yeah. And indirect tax yeah. for government. Yeah. Then there is no need for any business to keep their money. But some businesses do that. So that is where we are talking about efficiency. Yeah. That is where the GI will have to go and attack them and get their money. Yeah. You heard the chief executive of the National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mark Bedu Abwaji. Remember, there's a repeat of this discussion at 11 a.m. later today on the Joy News channel. The managing director of the IMF, Kristalina Georgieva, is making a strong case to help Ghana and other countries hit by debt crisis to receive help quickly. She disclosed this in a curtain raiser program in Ivory Coast ahead of the annual IMF World Meeting in Morocco. The world has a responsibility to stand with vulnerable countries as they deal with shocks they have not caused. This is why we at the IMF have created the new $40 billion strong resilience and sustainability trust. We have already approved 11 programs and I'm very proud. Six of them are on the African continent. Five of them are in sub-Saharan Africa. We also need to work together to help countries deal with debt challenges. One-fifth of emerging economies and more than half of low-income countries are at risk of debt distress. We have made progress. The common framework is starting to deliver, even if it is not delivering as fast as we want it uh, to do. So let me give you the um, timelines. Five months for Ghana. We are going in the right direction. We just need to speed up. Moving on, the aggrieved customers of collapsed Gold Coast Fund Management Company has disclosed its members will picket the Ministry of Finance to demand their locked up funds. According to the group, the Securities and Exchange Commission has not paid its members whose funds were locked after picketing at the premises of SEC for three days in May 2023. Speaking to Joy Business, convener of the group Charles Nyami said, all efforts to get their locked up funds from the defunct Gold Coast Funds Management Company have proved futile hence their decision to picket the finance ministry from october 10th to october 12th we had a three days picketing at the security selection commission that's the regulator's office in demanding immediate payment of our monies and clarification on a uh, pertinent issue surrounding our payment after the protest, the Secret Selection Commission wrote to us officially, directing us to redirect our questions and demands of payment to the Finance Ministry. Therefore, we have no option. Direct our questions and demand of our payment to the Finance Ministry. That is what has necessitated us to organize this 48 hours continuous picketing at the Finance Ministry starting from on the 10th of October 2023 to the 12th October 2023. And this is how the arrangement is going to go. 
to the Ghana Stock Exchange now and its managing director Abina Amwa has underscored the need for an increase in financial literacy to help investors remain resilient and boost investor confidence. According to her, financial literacy will help investors make informed decisions in times of economic uncertainty. She was speaking at the Ring a Bell for Financial Literacy Program organized by the Ghana Stock Exchange. There's more in this report. It's a matter of our emotional well-being and that was Resilience, that investor resilience we believe can be taught through programs like this that enhance investor literacy and protection. We believe that embedding financial literacy is a call to national duty because we need to support all stakeholders to make sure that this happens. Financially empowered citizens, it is a basic human right. Because that is what gives you inclusion. That is what helps you step up in wealth generation. That was the managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Abena Amoa. Moving on, engineering practitioners have been entreated to be transparent in procurement processes in their line of duty. This according to the president-elect for the Ghana Institution of Engineering, Engineer Ludwig Hesse is key to addressing the infractions within public sector procurement processes. He was speaking at the institution's 39th induction ceremony. I would advise you to take this vow seriously and to do all your, in your power to practice engineering, not only in a technically competent manner, but also ethically. Disclose any potential conflict of interest to a potential or current client or employer upon discovery of the possible conflict. Promote transparency fair competition and equal opportunities in procurement processes and professional appointments and not engage in collusive practices. SG Bank Ghana says it is working to partner various organizations to expand its support for small and medium scale enterprises. According to Managing Director Hakim Ozani, the bank will continue to make provisions on capacity building for SMEs to take advantage of the African Continental Free Trade Area. He spoke to Joy Business at the celebration of the bank's 20th anniversary. Uh, we have four years ago, we have opened the, uh, the SG Home of Business to accompany uh, with partners, public and private partners, the SMEs of Ghana. We trust that uh, SMEs can become bigger. We are giving them also advice as we can, ourselves and our partners, to understand, for them to understand how to manage. Now, prospective homeowners say they are frustrated by high prices and interest rates in their quest to put up homes. Available research shows materials and labor are the most significant cost components in building a home in Ghana. So today on the Joy Business Journal, Love FM's Mona Lisa Frimpon explores the situation. Home prices have leveled off in 2023. Theophilus Yeboa, a finance officer at an IT firm, fears building a house now puts him on a track of going broke. What you take as a take-home salary and looking at what you want to get for yourself to call a home, you would have to be saving, say, 60% of your take-home salary, which in a Ghanaian context is very difficult to do that. Because sometimes even before the month end, you would have spent 80% of your salary. According to the Ghana Property Center, the average price of a house in the Kumasi metropolis of the Ashanti region is 550,000 Ghana cities. The most expensive house cost over 5 million Ghana cities, whilst the cheapest cost 74,600 Ghana cities. Dokas Mwachidankwa, a petty trader, has created her budget list to put up a home but might have to wait longer. The price quotation of real estate developers is out of price range for some prospective homeowners in Kumasi. Lydia, Omari and Perez, both teachers, have dropped the idea of putting up luxurious houses and opted for affordable homes. For now, renting will be better. 
because building it takes time so you rent then the more you are in the rent you start something by the time your rent will end if you have finished your house then you move out in fact even where we live now if there is anywhere else that could offer less we will move uh, because it's affordability that matters but Law Mafuti, a banker, is unfazed by the rising cost of building materials. He is making headways 